Have you ever wondered how buildings are demolished safely? Don't they just blow them up? Or smash them to bits with a massive ball of metal? On a very basic level, yes, but it is a lot more complicated than that. Let's find out why. Generally speaking, demolition experts and developers have several options at hand to bring a building down. They can either cause it to implode with explosives, use a high reach arm to progressively disassemble it, use the good old fashioned wrecking ball, or choose selective demolition techniques. Which one they choose will depend on a variety of factors, including things like the size of the building, where it is located, what the building is made of, the reason for the demolition works, how post-demolition debris will be disposed of. Let's go through some of the techniques. Implosion is, hands down, the most dramatic and impressive way to end a building's life. It involves the liberal use of strategically placed explosives to take out the building's main supports. It is generally used on taller buildings, like tall chimneys, bridges, tower blocks, and skyscrapers that are usually located in urban areas. This technique usually focuses on the foundation and lower levels to make the building literally fall in on itself, succumbing to gravity. Implosive demolition is a very technically challenging process and can take months of planning and preparation to achieve. The building is also usually stripped of elements like non-structural walls to aid the demolition process. Explosives chosen are usually either TNT or a compound called RDX. The former is great for most applications, but when a lot of steelwork is involved, RDX is commonly used. In most cases, structural columns are bored to plant explosives at the foundation and lower levels. This results in the building collapsing with the upper floors doing most of the work under the influence of gravity. After all the days and months of preparation, the demolition process usually only takes a few seconds. Another demolition technique is called high reach arm. Usually the weapon of choice for buildings that are more than 66 feet tall, it involves using a base machine fitted with a long demolition arm on a telescopic boom. Various demolition tools like a crusher, shears, or a hammer take the building apart piece by piece. This is a common technique for reinforced concrete, masonry, steel, and mixed material structures. It is considered safer and more precise than more traditional techniques like using a wrecking ball. Also known as crane and ball demolition, this is a tested method of smashing a building to smithereens. Typically employed on concrete and other masonry structures, wrecking balls typically weigh up to 13,500 pounds apiece. This massive chunk of metal is suspended on a cable from a crane and is either dropped onto or swung with force into the structure of the building. While the technique might sound very primitive, it is a highly skilled profession and requires expert control of each swing. One miss and the entire wrecking ball assembly could tip over or worse, hit something else. This technique also creates a lot of dust, vibration, and noise, and is not appropriate for some locations. Lastly, selective demolition, also known as strip-out, is gaining popularity in the industry, as it allows building materials to be reclaimed and recycled. This is especially the case for buildings of historical importance, or buildings with special architectural and decorative features. It involves the selective removal of things like wood, brick, metals, and concrete for later use in other builds. The primary objective of this technique is to recover large amounts of reusable and recyclable materials in a safe and cost-effective manner. This process is obviously very labor-intensive and time-consuming, therefore it is not always practical. However a building is brought to its knees, any technique must be safe for both the demolition crew and any surrounding buildings, nearby public spaces, and of course, members of the public. When demolition goes wrong, it can go very, very wrong indeed. 
In fact, the occupation is widely considered one of the most hazardous in the world, for obvious reasons. But even with the best planning, sometimes things just don't go to plan. For example, the demolition of a silo in Vordingborg, Denmark in 2018 turned into a nightmare when it fell completely the wrong way. It destroyed one neighboring building and damaged others. Thankfully, no one was killed. So next time you see a building targeted for destruction, you might want to watch the demolition crew progress over time. Who knows, you might even be able to get a front row seat to an implosive demolition.